Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about Starn and Garlag experiment. This experiment plays a crucial role in the development of quantum mechanics and it is also the experimental evidence of spin and intrinsic property of the electron and the direct proof of the phenomenon of space quantization. This is the star and garlic apparatus. This is a oven, this is a collimated slit and this is a magnet specially designed to produce an inhomogeneous magnetic field along z axis and this is a screen. Now Starn and Garlock use silver atoms. They put the atom inside the oven. As a result of being heated, the silver atoms acquire kinetic energy and they went through the slit. And then they are subjected to the magnetic field. Starn and Garlock found two distinct spots on the screen. And they tried to describe the distinct spot of the screen by the specific orient orientation of the orbital angular momentum. But this turns out to be wrong. As the outermost electron of the silver atom is in 5s1 state, as it is in s state, so it has zero orbital angular momentum. So the theory provided by the star and Garlock in the context of this result was wrong. In 1925, Gaudsmith and Uhlenbeck proposed the idea of the spin and they tried to describe the result of the Starn Garlock experiment and the theory matched with the experimental, experimental result perfectly. Today we will follow how they were able to prove the existence of the spin in context of the experimental result of Starn and Garlock. And there is only two factors in this experiment that will influence the result. One is the magnetic field produced by this magnet and other how the proposed spin angular momentum of the electron interacts with this magnetic field. In the context in this in this experiment the magnet was the magnet was specially designed in such a way that it will produce the magnetic field only in jet direction and the strength of this magnetic field vary, was varied from point to point in jet direction so it is an inhomogeneous magnetic field only in jet direction and the strength of the field will depend on the value z so we can write the magnetic field as it has only z component and that z component will also will be the function will be the function of z and now if we if we visualize the spin of the electron as a spinning sphere of charge then the moving charge will produce current as we know when the charge moves it will produce a current and the current in a loop also behaves as a magnet so this specific magnetic moment will interact with the magnetic field given and the magnetic moment generated due to the spin of the electron is given by e by s e by m where e is the electronic charge m is the mass of the electron times the spin angular momentum as this is a vector relation so the component of the left hand side will match the component of the right hand side. If we take only the z component of the magnetic moment then it is equal to E by M times the z component of the spin. Now when we put when we place a magnet in the magnetic field where the magnetic moment of the magnet is mu, mu and the magnetic the strength of the magnetic field is B then the potential energy of that magnet will be given by the relation u is equals to minus mu dot b. So the force of the magnet, force on that magnet subjected by the magnetic field is equals to the negative gradient of the potential energy. Now here the potential, here mu is the spin angular moment and b is the magnetic field subjected by the magnet. 
so the force on the electrons due to their spin is given by negative gradient of the potential energy that is mu dot b is equals to two negative can neg negative signs cancels out so gradient of mu dot b we can write mu dot b as mu x b x plus mu y b y plus mu z b z so as as the magnet magnetic field is in only in z direction so b x and b y equals to zero so the force on the electron equals to the gradient of the mu z b z now the gradient operator can be explicitly written in this form i cap del del x plus j cap del del y plus k cap del del z times the mu z bz 